Okay, so we are just going to be getting into this game now. Uh, we are in game S between Pyman09 and Mott9001. Two exceedingly good players. Uh, who do you guys fancy for this one? Pyman. Um, I, I actually know that Mott has been doing a lot of training for this, and I think that we he's got a pretty slick execution going. So I'd be interested to see the results of this one. Well, I think you're wrong, and Pyman's going to win, so meh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I. Uh, to be honest, my heart says Pie Man, but my brain says Mont. Um, I've, I mean, Mont's been playing in tournaments since. I mean, I think since back in beta. Pie Man's recently started to come into the uh, tournament scene, but he has a lot to prove, especially for a match on Forge. Okay, well, we are now going into game S between Pie Man between Mot nine thousand one. Personally, my money. Probably on Mott, I think. Um, but I, I know he can be a very good player, but he's also a inconsistent player. But here we go. Spawning in in the yellow is Mott9001 with going for a vehicle start. And his opponent, Pyman9... Uh, sorry, 909. Nine. Nine. Is, uh, is Pyman... Oh my good lord. Is Pyman09 going for a vehicle start? You can do it. I'm gonna, uh, yes, we got there. We got there. Excellent. I might have a lie down now. All right, well, while Quitch has a nap, I'm going to just kind of talk about what's going on. It looks like we do have Mott opening with that early scout with the skitter, trying to just figure out what he wants to do, and oh no, it has begun. The panic from Pie Man. I think he might have just set his factory up just a little off to the point where I think he might not get that one metal extractor, and it doesn't look like he does. So I think those initial nerves are definitely already getting to Pie Man, playing, playing up against a player like Mott. I think that should be in range. That should be available to an area build, not a commander build. I think the commander's a bit more. I know. Yeah, I know the fabricators can sneak it in. Yeah, uh, actually, his his uh, placement there of the air factory a little off, for causing his commander to have to take a bit of a walk to uh, to build that. And indeed, his placement not ideal here. He's giving his commander a bit more walking time than is necessary. Whereas Mott is putting together his puzzle rather perfectly, I think. Well, hopefully he gets those fabricators to try and at least try. I mean, I think he just needs to give it a shot. But yes. Um, Pie Man definitely having his commander take a bit of a stroll here while he's trying to build his base. Mott going for a very heavy vehicle section and then getting into the air. Well, it looks like Pie Man decided to go with his vehicle factory, air factory, and then vehicle factory. Where, So we're seeing a bit of variance from the two players, but it's pretty much identical so far. Yeah, well, Pie Man's starting to fall a little behind here in the factory game. Holding up on the resources. Merlin just getting his third vehicle factory up. Uh, Mott almost complete with the air factory. Going for what is a, on most maps an unusually late A. Air is often seen as the second factory, but I think for the for Forge, um, I think you can get away with that. Yeah, especially on a map like Forge, where the travel time between the two bases is very minimal. I mean, especially on a map like Duat, where you've got pretty much you have to go across the planet just to see your opponent's base. On a map like this, air can be a lot more delayed just because you don't really have to think, oh my you know, my opponent gonna go mass bombers? No, just the way that the bombers have been set up now is they they're more of a run and gun kind of deal. They really can't go in and have sustained uh, confrontations. Yeah, absolutely, and both players are actually taking a very defensive stance. Neither of them making a push on their opponents. Uh, well, for those of you for, this, for me, the StarCraft terminology, their natural expansion. This little block of four, which is always the first point someone expands to on Forge. Um, if you can take out your opponent's block of four on Forge, that's often going to win you the game. But neither of them making any real moves on the other one right now. Well, as you say that, of course, just because the caster's course curse, we do see Mott starting to move out with the, with his four tanks. Um, these bombers, this bomber though, it's going to fly in, get some easy poke damage, and he might lose that one tank. But these are some nice and squishy tanks here for Pie Man to try and move in and kind of just pick off the anti-air for Mott. Nowhere to be seen, and death and destruction from above. Pie Man getting a very nice little catch. Oh, and a nice little bit of bomber micro is there as he sits the bomber directly over the tank, so it drops every bomb on top of the tank rather than doing a sweep across them. So uh, a nice win, uh, a nice little win there. But I think both players, again, falling back to their defensive stances, the lines are just being drawn up, and we see in fact Pie Man sweeping across the six mechs on the edge there just to check whether or not Mott's tried for a cheeky expand. Now this is interesting. Um, Pie Man being the only of, only of the two players to actually get some bombers out. Mott saying, "I'm not even going to try with this bomber strike." He's going pure anti-air, and I don't. I mean, Pie Man will, he will not be able to kill his commander, but he will know exactly where the commander is. So he might just be able to send his units to the other side of the map or the other kind of channel of the uh, base and just ignore the commander. You know, kill the base, ignore the commander, and you can still win easily off of that. 
Yeah, well, some, uh, surprisingly, uh, Mott really should have moved his air force out there when the bomber was attacking. He had the planes um, to at least to cause it to withdraw and continue his aggressive tank push, but seemingly uh, forgetting about that force and not bringing it forward. But uh, both of them started to come forward with their commanders now. I think we're going to see a, a battle for this centre point. But Pie Man already starting to take a nice little eco lead there, uh, but Mott maintaining the factory lead. He might be maintaining the factory lead, but like you said, the economy. Um, since he didn't have that bomber, I noticed he, his anti-air flew right over a completely exposed uh, vehicle fabricator, and <laughs> he couldn't kill it. So, you know, five, no, f excuse me, four metal extractors being put up pretty much without any issue. And um, it was really nice to see that Pie Man did check that six metal island as he now goes to capture it himself. Um, I know a lot of the uber and higher skilled players, they really like to go for that six island just because it kind of gives you that extra advantage to kill off your opponent. Yeah, in many ways, this is actually quite a quite a slow grab. Although now, in the era of the drifter, it's a lot harder to take that island than it used to be. Previously, you'd rush a Fabro over there, you slap up a wall. Mott's in trouble. Uh, yes, he's well, he's moving with his commander, so he's got he's got the troops to take out that tank army if he decides to push. He could actually score a, a nice little win. As Matiz refers to commanders as uh, their health is a resource. So you sacrifice a little health, you take out tank group. Something. Oh, but the bombers get picked off. That was bad. Yeah, Pie Man unfortunately sitting his uh, air force a little out of position there, but he's doing he's doing nice. He's slowly pushing forward. He's bringing on the pressure. He's not converting his resource lead though um, very well. He's just starting to get on top of it now, and he's still not being challenged for that area of six. Maybe Mont's just not thinking that it's there, or he might be trying to get it as the uh, as this little army back here is going to start moving in. Now the commander is starting to move. Or the two commanders getting really, really close. I mean, they're pretty much going to just be waving at each other in a couple minutes here. But the factory count, I believe, for is in now now in Pyman's favor. So he's up one, identical on the Fabers. So Pyman is in a great position, even if he's he was only uh, below for a couple of seconds there. He's had a fantastic control, and I think his his economy game has just been fantastic so far. Oh, but the Uber shot. Never mind. So that was an atrocity to mankind. <laughs> Well, Mark using his commander very nicely here with his push. He's, he's going to just... T yeah, I think he knows he's behind on the metal now, and he's going to just make an aggressive central push here. He's also got the troop advantage, but we see uh, there was a little harass going around the back there by Pie Man with a drifter. Just scanning around the back, seeing what's going on, seeing if there's some easy fabric kills to pick off. But as I was just saying earlier, this area of six, if, if Mott built a few drifters, he could clear that entire space out now. He doesn't need to come in down the front door, doesn't have to worry about walls. Now this is concerning. Mott has taken a very aggressive spot for his commander, and really, Pie Man's pretty much blocked himself in. This building is in the way of, of his commander being able to dish out any damage, and he's put himself into a very awkward p situation. He can try and go into attack, but there's the walls there for the commander to kind of hide behind, and there's a lot of units here for Mott to try and use. And simply put, as long as his commander's here, he can easily walk his units. Oh god, another fantastic uber shot from Mott. So what I was trying to say, like, he can take these units, send them over here, and his and Pie Man's commander will not be able to go anywhere because of Mott's commander. So the unit advantage that Mott has right now will do fantastic damage, and honestly, he should be pressing a lot harder. Well, if you look at the army count now, Mott is pulling significantly ahead now. It's like 90 troops to 40. Those Uber shots really paying off for him. Pie Man's got the eco, but he hasn't been converting it fully into production, and Mott is just making some really nice, really aggressive plays down the middle here. Now, he has these two fabricators back here. Honestly, he needs to be using those if he wants to try and get back up. He's already lost two factories alone, and those two factories will lose him the game if he doesn't try to do anything. These six, uh, the six metal, six metal islands, excuse me, that he does have is pretty much under pressure now with the uh, army looming outside. So, Pie Man in a very awkward situation, even though he had such a fantastic uh, economy game. Well, as well, if any player abandons this position, there is now a quite a significant amount of metal lurking in that position. If uh, it doesn't matter if Mott's behind, if he can lay claim to all of this, uh, all this unit destruction that's gone on, uh, then he could just convert that into additional troop production anyway. He doesn't even need the metal spots. Agreed. Well, at this point, Pie Man is floating very hard, and uh, he needs to find something that he can try and kind of use this great economy because they're both floating now. And well, Mott's just going to walk in and just say hi. And we see uh, Mott ill-advisedly preparing for a frontal assault on the area of six. Um, I don't know if he's going to just try and flank, or if they're going to just go past. It looks like they might not be going that direction. He's going to he's gonna sweep around the side. Not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, Pie Man's troops look a little lost and confused here, floating around the center, but they're going to get flanked if they're not careful. Well, they will get flanked by that mega army, and now the commander from Mott is 
Well, he's actually really exposed. I mean, forget the main army. Even if he decides to go in now, Mott's commander is incredibly out of position, and Pyman sees this, and he's going to take the advantage. He probably needs to start moving in, put some turrets up, put a pelter up, try and do something, because this commander is the only way that he can win this game. He needs to kill his commander now. Yeah, at this point, I, I think rather than slap down a bot factory, let's get some boom bots. Like, get some boom bots, agreed. When someone's making an aggressive commander push into the center like that, you want to have some boom bots in hand, so the second they make a mistake, the second they're out of position, that's it. You just turn it around with a single nice maneuver snipe. But look at this, look at this. Uh, Mott is literally setting up a proxy base just inches away from Pi Man's base. It's so cheeky, it's unbelievable. It's very disappointing because Pi Man had such a f fantastic opening. I just, I feel like he wasn't expecting to have such a greedy opening succeed. And so when he had that economy, he just he was like, um, I guess I'll just start building things here. And then the commander up front, Mont, just did so good at those Uber shots. I mean, so many tanks lost just to the Uber cannon alone that it was very damaging to Pi Man. It seems yeah, right now, uh, Pi Man just hasn't. And this concave. He just hasn't been able to turn this economy advantage into troops. Uh, Mark always slightly behind an eco, but he's had the troops out and he's kept the pressure on. After a rather defensive start, he's been putting the pressure on, brought the commander forward very sensibly, I think. Um, and Pi Man just hasn't had the response. And look at Pi Man now retreating into his base, setting up a wall defense, but he's just got. He's nothing. lost his base. There's no base to retreat to. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely nothing here whatsoever. He's setting up another base. Uh, down in the, well, I think it's the southwest here, but uh, it, th this looks overwhelming. He needs to get his commander on the front lines as well, because really only the Uber Cannon is going to turn this fight around. Definitely. And the commander running away, not the right choice. A bomber trying to valiantly take on an entire army full of anti air, and death was quickly uh, accepted by that bomber. Now we do see boom bots, interestingly, no, interestingly enough, excuse me, coming out of Mott, trying to maybe go for a commander snipe, but honestly, he doesn't need to. Mott should know, especially from the skill that he has, that he's in a very commanding spot. I mean, he just cleaned out Pi Man's base, though the commander's not there. Like I said, for Mott in Pi Man's command, break the base, you kill the commander easy. Yeah, I think Pi Man making a mistake there uh, with the retreating of his commander. He's worried about getting the commander killed, but at this point, uh, the commander has to engage to turn it around, but he's got nothing left anymore. Here come the boom mm -hmm. bots. Uh, again, not too bad, but. Uh, and there and we there's go. the game. There we go. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, uh, too, uh, too passive play, I think, there by Pi Man, and a very, very nice, very confident win by Mott. And I do believe that uh, gives me a point in the cast of prediction stakes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put my predictions down, so I'm still zero for zero. I think there was, I think there was a mention of Pi Man early on. Uh, however, for uh, for the review of this game, then we are going to be handing over to Sorian and to Roncat, who are going to walk you through this game, uh, the ins and outs, what happened, and all the significant moments. So, over to you, chaps. Well, early on, as you all saw, what happened was that so Pi Man was able to get a very convincing lead, a couple of early victories there, that fantastic bomber micro managed to dissuade Mott's attempt at raiding, and I think Mott did make a mistake in the early game in attempting to use vehicles, um, particularly the bolos, for raiding, whereas uh, because of their slow speed and uh, the, the, the long traverse times, it gives your opponent plenty of time to react head off. Really, if you're going for that early a raid, you ought to be using docks rather than bolos. I think that was much a mistake there. Pi Man capitalized on that and was able to take a nice early eco lead, but as we saw, he was not able to convert that into a particularly large army because he wasn't building enough factories to keep up with the rate at which he was expanding his metal production. And we saw plenty of float there, and although the numbers in the top left were throughout the game looking fairly positive for Pi Man, what you did see in the army count was that the mobile unit for Mott was outstripping him constantly despite that early loss. Yeah, even even five minutes into the game, I'm looking at in chrono cam right now, five minutes into the game, the mobile unit count between the two uh, was neck and neck. Uh, but then Pi Man's uh, economy, he just started wasting and not using uh, the economy gains that he had. Um, you know, he had a 50% eco lead over, over Mott five minutes into the game and wasn't uh, capitalizing on it at all. And so Mott made a fairly risky play, getting his commander so exposed so often. He didn't often have all that many units behind him. About 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, you can see that the commander was stepping right out in the front lines, completely unsupported there. There were some bolos hovering behind him, but there was a large army there from Pi Man. And what Mott I did find was doing exceedingly well was using the cannon sparingly 
and trying to keep it at range and his placement was absolutely on point. Every single uber cannon he fired took out at least half a dozen units and he was able to really, really push forward aggressively with that commander and Pyman just didn't have the wherewithal to respond because Mott moved in so early Pyman hadn't had the chance to use his eco expansion to build up a defensive force so uh, as it, in fact as you can see uh, we're about 7 minutes 20 in uh, Pyman is desperately trying to build factories and Mott's commander is just there like no you're not having them sorry and that meant that the float just kept increasing and increasing for Pyman until Mott finally overwhelmed him yeah, up until up until that six and a half minute mark, you know, the unit count was pretty even, and then a few unit cannons and Pie Man, uh, you know, wasn't even with the mobile count and never recovered after that point. I, th I think his, his his main. I I was interested to see that there were. I don't think any bots used at all that game. I was just quickly scouting through the vehicle, the factories that both players have. I don't actually see. A single bot factory being built. It was all vehicles, which I yeah, find interesting. Yeah, all vehicles again, in one air. Again, I, I feel like, particularly for the very early game, having those fast-moving docks available to you is so useful for harassing your opponent. Particularly, uh, fabricators going out by themselves. It's really useful to be able to sort of just you see it on the radar, rush them towards him, blow him up, carry on, move away. Yeah, and but it looked not, like early on in the game, both players did a good job of sending their fabricators out with. Uh, vehicles in tow uh, as a defense, so that may not have given them as much of an advantage as you might think. Absolutely, um, but th that's that, well because they've got these um, because both players were being that defensive, the docks would not have been as effective at raiding metal out uh, metal outlying bases. But what you actually notice is that Mott never expanded into the little secluded area to the east of his base, and actually. Pie Man had a single boat, uh, that was a drifter in fact, not a bolo, a drifter sat there defending it and uh, preventing him from expanding there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, although Mott was very aggressive at pushing into Pie Man's base, Pie Man's expansion was absolutely on point, his eco expansion was absolutely on point, but he was just not able to keep up with that in terms of unit production. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that is um, many hours of training starting to show there. Because as I say, he, he did practice half this tournament. I think he very much wants to get him to the finals and have a chance of winning that sign statue. Everyone here does, of course. But he seemed like he was training very, very hard for this. I think that's the case of his practice of execution paying off. And having yeah. that aggressive play, that confidence to put your commander so exposed in the front line there. Just to use his armor as, a, as, a, as a, an absorbing a sponge almost. A damage sponge for all of Pie Man's forces. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty interesting to see the game won not by just, you know, huge eco expansion and stuff, but simply just better tactics, better strategy, um, not who had the most metal spots. Oh, well, I was... I, it was over fairly quickly, and I know that um, T2, or Advanced Tier, is obviously a lot more accessible now, but I think neither... Pl they really had the chance to go for it there because that was over so quickly with those really aggressive tactics. But um, I feel like certainly towards the end there, if Pie Man had been a little bit quicker to get his factories up and running, he would have had a chance to go for a little bit of T2 there and build some slightly tankier units. I'm talking about sort of a well, let's, let's see, it would have been about ten minutes into the game had it been going differently. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this map is kind of small for that. And you, like you said, the game was over way too quickly to be eating uh, uh, tier two units. <laughs> well, this is true. I don't, I, maybe I'm just biased because I like I like it when hit players get to the advanced tier because it expands the roster of units on your screen dramatically when that happens. And there are some really really uh, awesome units that have been added into the Titans patch. Actually, I mean the Manhattan, for example, I absolutely adore. Uh, the Manhattan, for those of you who are watching who might not necessarily know what that is, actually I should probably go in and explain in some depth, uh, is an advanced vehicle that can be built in the advanced vehicle factory. It costs a fair amount of metal, and essentially it is a nuclear bomb on wheels. And as soon mm -hmm. as you produce it out of that factory, you need to get it away from all of your own stuff as soon as you can, because if someone decides to snipe it while it's in your base, that's the equivalent of a nuke going off inside your base, which is obviously best avoided. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's 
It's definitely a fun little unit. Um, you can't really group it with other units uh, because if it obviously if it blows up, that's going to take all the units nearby with it. Um, so the the fun thing to do is to uh, get an orbital titan over your enemy's base, send it through the teleporter, uh, because the orbital titan acts as a teleporter endpoint. Uh, and then yeah, basically you teleport a, a big nuke in the middle of your opponent's base. <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, that's, and actually the Manhattan, from memory, is a lot cheaper than building a nuclear missile, so actually it's a much cheaper way to just nuke spam your opponents. You just build five of those, stick them next to a teleporter. It's slightly higher risk, of course, because if they get taken out for whatever reason, they have no direct fire defenses themselves. So if they oh. get caught out by themselves, then you've obviously you've invested a lot of metal there, which is going to be wasted. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, they are very finicky units. Um, but I like if, that. I like the flavor that that adds. 